Okay, so I think at this point we start getting a bit speculative. Okay, and I think there are, there are sort of two parts to, to, to what I've said and what I've got to say. And um, part one has been that something that many people knew that um, the numbers of points are, are determined by the periods. first answer is no, I don't see how to do it. Um, and it may be that there is an answer, but it's closer in spirit to what Dave was telling us about. And the trouble is that there's a map, there's a change of coordinates. Um, which involves, surely involves the periods. But um, this is a transcendental change of, of coordinates. I mean, the, 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 there's the, the formulae you're talking about say something like this, that YTTT, which I can compute, is, is um, well, it's quite complicated. Um, but this is basically 1 over 1 minus psi to the fifth, and then there's a pi zero, whatever pi zero squared, and there's some factors of two pi i over five, which I won't get right. Um, and then there's a d psi dt cubed, right? Um, and this is five plus the sum, k is naught, k is one to infinity, n k, k cubed, q to the k, over 1 minus q to the k. Now, to unscramble all that, so t is, as we said, pi 1 over pi 0. q is e to the 2 pi i t. Okay. So, this expression is just made up of algebraic quantity is 1 minus psi to the fifth, and it's made, it involves the period. And t is t of lambda through this relation. And you have to invert that la relation to get lambda in terms of uh, t, right? So you have to write this in terms of t. But really, because there was a logarithm here, this t is really undefined up to multiples of integers. So the good coordinate is e to the 2 pi i t, like this, so it's q. So you have to invert this relation to get psi that occurs here, or lambda, in, as, a, as a series in q. Now you can do all of that, and you have to take into account that there's a deep psi dt q. But when you it, do all of that and expand it out, you get a series with integral coefficients, and those integers mean something. Right. But this is a highly transcendental equation. And I don't know what the... Is there something called a Tate conjecture that relates number of points of a finite field to number of curves? Well... I don't know. Just okay, so that, that's... Okay, so that's what the evening sessions are for, right? So, so, so if you if you if you come this evening, then then we try and sort it out. I I I, I don't know. Um, 
I don't know what relation this has to the number of... I don't know what the relation is. No, 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 no. I mean, you're probably saying something that I ought to be aware of, but I'm not. Sorry, that's one of those U minus and psi ones. I'm sorry? I'm sorry, you're ha I, can't, I can't hear. Can you speak up? Can you remind us what psi is? The psi is the, is the psi in the quinting, right? Some of the fifth powers minus five, minus five psi. And, and uh, right, so this just refers to the quinting. And why? And, and the letter Y. Why? Oh, this is... Uh, it doesn't matter. Never mind what the letter Y is. <laughs> The important thing is that... The, 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 letter, the, the letter Y just is a certain quantity that's important in physics which you can calculate two ways. That's the, only, that's the important thing about it for us. We can calculate two ways. This is one way, and this is another way. And therefore they're equal. That, that, that's what that that's what okay, so... The other part, okay, so there, 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 there's one part of the story that says that numbers of points are determined by the periods. There's a parenthetic comment on that, which is that these expressions are actually useful, which is if you want to actually compute the number of points, then it's a good way to compute them. Okay, and it's for sure far better than counting. Okay. This being so, you can't stop yourself trying to compute the zeta function. Okay, so zeta function of t. So for the quintic, zeta function of, say, uh, t and psi is the exponential. k equals 1, I guess, to infinity, nk of psi, t to the k, over k. So, you can't stop yourself uh, computing that and looking at it as a function of psi. After all, it's not as hard as, as, as it looks because you know that you, it's sufficient just to calculate the first few n's. To, uh, we know that the zeta function is a rational function. You know something about the degrees and so on. So, if you're lucky, you calculate the first few n's and you fix all the undetermined coefficients. So, that's what we want to do. Okay. Now, one of the things we want to look at is that in terms of, of uh, zeta function, in terms of mirror symmetry, the zeta function looks wrong. Okay. So, we know that uh, the zeta function is a rational function, and we know that the top line is a numerator of degree for the quintic, or for Carl RBR threefold, is num numerator degree B3, which is 2H21 plus 2. Okay. And the denominator... Is B1 or 0? B1 is 0. Ah. Right. Denominator of degree... Well, it's the sum of the even homologies, so it's 2H11 plus 2. Okay. And the HPQs have this form. So there's 1, 0, 0, 0, H11, 0. So in general, H21, H21, 1, 0, H11, 0. <coughs> right, so you have Hodge numbers like this. So now this is just talking about the uh, Calabi-Yau in general, not, not specializing to the quintic. A mirror symmetry is a symmetry where you sort of reflect the diagram in an axis like that, and you find, given an M, you find a W with the H11 and H21 interchange. So your first thought is, oh, well, isn't that nice because interchanging H11 and H21 interchanges the numerator with the denominator. So 
First thought is zeta m is 1 over zeta w, question mark. Well, of course, that's not right. I mean, that can't possibly be right because um, the zeta is given by essentially as the exponential of the number of points. So if the number of points is positive, you can't have the number of points positive and this relation. Okay. So that doesn't work. And a source of asymmetry in here is that although it looks good at the beginning, the numerator of degree 2h21 plus 2 actually depends on the parameters on parameters. Okay, so if we do this for the quintic, this actually depends on this number psi or lambda. Okay, and you change psi and, and the, the terms in the numerator definitely change, whereas the denominator is a rather silly function, right? So uh, for the, it will just be 1 minus t, 1 minus pt, 1 minus p squared t, 1 minus p cubed t for the quintic. Okay, so um, this does not depend on the Kähler class parameters. So, um, I mean, it knows about how many Kähler class parameters there are. That's this number, 2H11 plus 2. But it doesn't depend on them except in a trivial way. Okay. So there's a fundamental asymmetry which looks strange. Sorry? Well, the, the mirror is a, a quintic. So that, that's, let, let, let me tell you what, what the story is. Okay, so there's a lot of structure here, but let, let's uh, let's go through. So, if you um, if you can perform the calculation for the for the quintic, so for the quintic, okay, so zeta m of t and psi. Sorry, this is. The top line is something that we call R1. Okay, so there it breaks up. There's a piece that's a, a, a quartic polynomial. There's another piece that's another quartic, R of, say, PT and Psi that appears to the power 20. And there's a piece... RB, PT, um, Psi, that appears to the power 30, and then you get this 1 minus T, 1 minus PT, 1 minus P squared T, 1 minus P cubed T. Okay. Um, and these factors, so R1, for example, is 1 plus AT plus B, P, T squared, plus A, P cubed, T cubed, plus P to the sixth, T to the fourth. Okay. So R1 has this form. It depends on two non-trivial coefficients, A and B, and RA and RB are similar. They also depend on two coefficients. So you might have thought that, 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 that this was terribly difficult. After all, the top line is of degree, each of those is a quartic, the top line is of degree 204, yes, that's right, 204, but in fact, it only depends on six coefficients. There are two coefficients in R1, two coefficients in RA, and two coefficients in RB, and you can fix them up rather easily by calculating a few, a few of the ends. Okay, um, you can do a calculation for the mirror t and psi, and you get here r1 of t and psi, which is the same r1 as occurs here, and on the bottom line you get this 1 minus t, 
1 minus pt to the 101, 1 minus p squared t to the 101, 1 minus p cubed t. Um, this is very pretty. I mean, you see with, with, with these HPQs that the numbers are 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0 1, 101, 101, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, you see here, and the 1, 101, 101, 1, you see across the bottom, and the R1 is the same. Okay, so the question is, in some sense, you would like to say that, at least, it's tempting to suggest that the definition of the zeta function should be changed so that this quantity here would become more like this. It would depend on the Kähler parameters in an appropriate way to make the dependence more like this. And similarly, this should correspond to this in a better way. Okay. So, um, I think before, I, I, I'd like to come back to that. Um, so let me put that on ice for the minute and talk more about, let me just talk more about the structure of this, uh, of the zeta function before we come on to that. Okay. So there are aspects of this, there are lots of aspects of this I don't really understand. Um, one of them is that we calculated the ends as a contribution over periods, and that sort of gave a natural breakdown as uh, let's try n as a contribution from the fundamental period pi zero plus a sum of terms that came from these periods pi v. So that gives a, a, a sort of natural breakdown of the number of, t uh, uh, number of points in that form. And of course, if you calculate the periods and you calculate this from the periods, it's easy to calculate these numbers separately. So we do that. And this leads to a, a, a since, since n is additive in the periods, so to speak, the zeta function becomes multiplicative in that way. And you calculate these, uh, these pieces. So this piece, um, this piece gives rise to this factor R1 or R0 over 1 minus t, 1 minus pt. 1 minus p squared t, 1 minus p cubed t. And then these factors give rise to the other pieces. And the v's, so we, several times we've written this down, the v's are, are of this form up to permutation. like that, and a priori, the, these, give, the, these are going to give rise to factors in here, c to v, and there's no, the, these numbers, these numbers are interesting, I mean, the nv's individually are, are <coughs> always rational, but they're not necessarily integers, and they're not necessarily positive. Of course, when you add everything up, then, then, then the result is always an integer. But the intermediate stages, um, they're not necessarily either integers or positive. Is it possible to move the paper a bit? Thanks. Okay. Right. Okay. 
those are not necessarily either integers or, uh, or, 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 or positive. And in particular, these eta v's, you don't even expect them to be um, simple quantities. I mean, you just expect to get an infinite, uh, an infinite series in T. And, then, and that's, in fact, what you often do get, except that, for reasons that, that I don't really understand, which is that if you take zeta 4, 1, 0, 0, 0, and multiply it by this other one, 3, 2, 0, 0, then you get something which is a polynomial. So, or something that's a, uh, related to a polynomial. So, um, there's something I've hidden from you, which is that it's very important whether 5 divides q minus 1 or not, because of these reasons to do with the relation, uh, with the existence of fifth roots of unity. And there's a smallest integer row, so there's an integer row such that 5 divides p to the row minus 1, and then row is 1, 2, or 4, depending on cases. Okay. And the form of this, it depends on this integer row, and so what we find is that this is equal to a quartic RA of argument p to the row, t to the row, depends on psi as a parameter, and it's this to the 1 over row. So it is this product of, of, of uh, factors, so to speak, gives something which is either a quartic polynomial or a, quart the, the, uh, a simple root of a quartic polynomial. And then these two go together, zeta 3, 1, 1, 0, 0, zeta 2, 2, 1, 0, 0 give us this factor Rb, also p to the row, t to the row, psi, 1 over rho. Now, what are Ra and Rb? Well, This times this is this. That's, um, I think if I'm honest, that, that's, uh, that was checked for all the primes that the computer could stand. Yeah. Right. Okay. Then we actually have an argument of what, what these objects are. And again, this comes from the period. So let's put that on one side for an, uh, a, a minute. And that is that we had these periods... F of A, B, C, and psi to the minus 5. Okay. And Euler says that if you have such a function, then you're well off to consider this integral. So integral what? Integral dx x to the alpha 1 minus x to the beta 1 minus x over psi to the fifth to the gamma where alpha, beta and gamma are given in some simple way by, in terms of a, b and c in a way that I could look up. Okay. But, okay. Now, so Given a period, you naturally write down this, and you can think of this as integral dx over y. And this gives you an equation which says that y to the fifth is let 
let me write it this way, minus alpha over 5 minus beta over 5, and And this, this factor is so, minus 1 minus beta over 5. Okay. So remember that, that it was always the case that A plus B was C. So C is not an independent parameter in this case. And A and B are related to alpha and beta in a simple way. And so if you think of this as integral dx over y, then you come to the equation that y to the fifth is x to the alpha, 1 minus x to the beta, 1 minus x over psi to the fifth to the 5 minus beta. And for the a, b, and c, you remember that a, b, and c were all th numbers like 1 fifth, 2 fifths, and 3 fifths. For the A, B, and C that we deal with, the alphas and betas are integers. And so it's natural to write it this way with a fifth power here to clear the, the one-fifths that are, that are present there. Okay. What is alpha and beta with respect to A, B, and C? Sorry? What is alpha and beta with respect to A, B, and C? Or are they related? Yeah, yeah they're, 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 there's, a, there's a, a table, right? So uh, V is 4, 1, 0. 0, 3, 2, 0, 0, 0, 3, 1, 1, 0, 0, 2, 2, 1, 0, 0. Um, then uh, A, B, C are what we've seen before. 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 1. Then this is 1 fifth, 4 fifths. One and it carries on. I won't write them all out. And then alpha, beta are two and three, one, <coughs> four, and so on. I mean, they're given. There's a simple relation between alpha, beta, and a, b, and c. In fact, I can give it. Um, alpha is five into one minus b and beta is 5 into 1 minus a, and um, that's true except for the last one where you want to swap a and b around. It doesn't matter. The whole thing is, is, is symmetric in a and b, although not obviously so. Um, anyway, the, the, so think of this equation. So again, we started with the periods, right? So the logic was, here, this is a period. What can this be due to? And then Euler says, if you have such a function, you write it this way, and you think of it this way, and this is a curve, and so this gives a curve E alpha beta. Okay. And then you check that these two curves, this one and this one, actually the curves are isomorphic. So the, these two curves are isomorphic, and we call that curve A, and these two curves turn out to be isomorphic. And we, call that, uh, we um, call that curve B. And these are curves of genus, genus 4. I believe the curves of genus 4. The Riemann curves of genus 4. And the statement is, OK, so now compute the zeta function for A. And the zeta function for A is of the form zeta for a is r a over what so zeta function a of a variable u is r a of u over one minus u one minus p u okay and this is the, the, the this function is the r a that appears in the zeta function for the quinty did you say the r a is a quartic r a is a quartic Okay. Okay. And the same if you replace A by B, then the same thing is true. So 
I don't know how it arises, but associated with the quintic, we associate two Riemann curves, A and B. With these Riemann curves, there arise these polynomials as factors in their as factors in their zeta functions, and these are the factors that go in here. So here we get R A P to the rho T to the rho of psi to the 20 over rho, because it happens 20 times, and then this happens 30 times, p to the rho, t to the rho, of psi to the 30 over rho. And somebody, Dave, always at this point says, but 4 doesn't divide 30, and then the answer to that is that it's very clever, and precisely in the case where rho is 4, this quantity is always a square. So, um, this is this is a series of, uh, of polynomials as, as advertised. Okay. So, if somebody has a, uh, an explanation for what is going on, I, for one, will be very grateful. Somebody always says something like the Jacobian factorizes or something but that's true, but that doesn't tell me anything because I started off by telling you that this is a property of the periods. Okay, the Jacobian is built from the periods. So if you say the Jacobian factorizes, you're just telling me that the periods have a special property, which, which is where we start from. Okay, so now let's talk a bit more about this. Uh, so that's the structure of... Um, That's the structure of the, the, the zeta function. Um, something pretty happens when it becomes singular. So when psi to the fifth is one, the manifold generates, um, becomes what we call a conifold. So there are 125 nodes. So when psi equals um, psi to the fifth is one, uh, the manifold becomes singular, and then the zeta function degenerates into a bunch of elementary factors. So the R1, the R1 which for all other values of the parameter is a quartic, now becomes in the singular case, it becomes a cubic, and the cubic factorizes into a linear piece and a quadratic piece, so this becomes 1 minus epsilon p, 1 minus epsilon pt, One minus epsilon p t, one minus a p t plus p q t squared, and then these other factors, one minus p t to the row to the two hundred over row, those factors become very elementary. And then here you get 1 minus t, 1 minus pt, 1 minus p squared t, 1 minus p cubed t. And then there's an extra factor here, 1 minus p squared t to the rho to the 24 over rho, which appears just in the case when the manifold becomes singular. Okay. So... Um, there's quite a pretty story here. Um, where to start? Well, the epsilon is just a sign, again, um, just based on computer calculations. 
the epsilon is just a sign, it's plus or minus one. So it's just, this is, is plus or minus one, depending on whether five is a square mod p or p is a square mod five. The interesting um, coefficient in here, the sort of one interesting coefficient, is this AP. So AP is the pth coefficient. in the Q expansion. Of the unique weight four modular form. For the group gamma zero of 25. Okay. So um, modularity appears here. And the gamma, the, 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 again, something that, that, that people are used to, but I'm not used to, is this, gamma, this group gamma zero of 25 has come out of nowhere. But um, you ask people why gamma zero of 25, and the answer is, well, five is the prime of bad reduction, and that's true. And you say, well, why 25 and not 125? And they say, mathematician's intuition. And, uh, and that's it, and, 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 and some trouble. So uh, it would be really nice to have an explanation as to why it's gamma zero of 25, why it's modular. Um, it, it's just conceivable. I mean, in the phys from the physics point of view, we have some idea of what this manifold looks like when it degenerates, and there's some interesting physics that's associated with that. And it's just conceivable that there might one day be a physics explanation for what this group is. Um, well, that was actually proved. It's actually proved. Nothing's proved, right? I mean, uh, we take this, we write it out for many values of p. We can compute this for many values of p. It's been suggested that that is the that is the modular form to look at. You look at the modular form and it's true. Okay, um, I'm not sure what a proof means beyond that. <laughs> okay, um, there, is, there is a pretty story um, here. Oh, and I should tell you about this, this piece that arises. This arises in, 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 in a very interesting way. Um, we counted all the periods, and we said that the periods were associated with monomials, x to the v. And we counted all the periods modulo and ideal, and we said that the periods, that the monomials x to the v consisted of Q plus 100 others. And at that point, I told a little lie. Okay. There's one more of degree 10 that doesn't normally get counted. And that's the, that's the one that says x1, x2 squared, x3 cubed, x4 to the fourth. Okay. Now, the ideal is generated by the partials, dp, dxi. And so one of these partials is dp, dx4, dp, dx4, which says that 5x4 to the fourth minus 5 psi x1, x2, x3, x5 is zero. Okay? So this says that you're allowed to replace x4 to the fourth here by psi times the others. So that has the effect that this is psi times x1 squared, x2 cubed, x3 to the fourth, x5. Okay? 
Now you do the, 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 the procedure again on x3 to the fourth, and you do it five times, and after you've done it five times, you come back to where you started, and so this comes down back to psi to the fifth times x1, x2 squared, x3 cubed, x4 to the fourth. Now, normally, you'd say that this is equal to psi to the fifth times itself, and psi to the fifth is not one, and therefore, and therefore, this object is trivial in cohomology. And you can do that, but when psi to the fifth is one, you can't do it. And in fact, there is one more monomial to take care of, this one, or rather 120 of them, due to the various permutations of x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. Um, there are 120 monomials who, which contribute to the cohomology precisely when psi to the fifth is one. And it's precisely, you have to take those into account, and they give us this extra term in the, in the uh, they give us that extra term in the zeta function. And there's a pretty story as to what they what 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 they are. There's a, there, there's a pretty story as to what they're due to, and and what happens is that we said there are 125 nodes. They get created, but there are only 101 parameters. <coughs> so each of these nodes, you, you take an S3 and you shrink it to zero. And your first thought is that the radius of each S3 might be a parameter, but that can't quite be true because there are only 101 free parameters. So there are 24 relations. 24 of, the, uh, 24 of the spheres must depend on the others, okay. which is a story then that there are 24 of these three spheres which somehow are the boundary of a four chain. So there's a four chain and its boundary is 24 of these three spheres. And then when you shrink the spheres to zero, we then create <coughs> So this happens, there are 24, <coughs> 24 relations. So that's right. So there are 24 four chains whose boundaries are three spheres. And when you shrink the three spheres to zero, then this makes 24 cycles, because the boundaries have now disappeared, that weren't there previously. And it's the 24 cycles, these new, so uh, 24 new cycles, and it's this 24 new cycles that are accounted for in this, uh, in this term. So there's a, a, a pretty story about how you can trace this through um, and, and actually see how, what these various terms correspond to. So, um, uh, actually, yeah? I'm not sure. Fernando would tell us what's proved, um, what, what isn't proved. Okay? okay. There, there is a proof. There is a proof. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the there is a proof? Yes. I mean, the, I, mean I, I, mean, I think uh, on, on, at, at, at something very, very much related to that was proved by Schoen and by Sam. Yes. Okay, you're trying to okay. All right. Okay. I think that's true. Okay. But what Schoen 
Um, oh, yeah, so, 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 I mean, I mean, so what they proved is that if you say, say psi is one, and if, if you resolve the singularity, that's right. And that's I look right. at uh, the dollar representation on each three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, no, 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 no. I, I, uh, what you say is true. Um, it's related. Right. Okay. This is the moduli space of quintics. Right. In there is the point psi to the fifth is one. For which the for which the space becomes singular. Okay. We're talking sorry? It's five of. Five of. Right. In there is a point for which the space becomes singular. Right. We're talking about the zeta function on this moduli space. Okay. In the down through here is another moduli space, which is the space for this for Schoen's manifold. Right. Because what he did is what you said. He let it become singular, and then he resolved the singularities. Right. And then he's talking about a different space. He's got a rigid Calabi yaw, and for example, his, his H21 is 25. Different space. Okay, he's off, he's off up here somewhere. Oh, H21 is zero. Sorry, H21 is zero. His H11 is 25 or something. Okay. Now, I can give you an argument based on these things disappearing and other ones being created when you resolve that takes this, this zeta function over into his zeta function. Okay. So, if, uh, if you consider that valid, then that's a proof that this factor is the same. Okay. But we're actually talking about different spaces. Um, no, this is very important because if you set rho equals 1 so that all this becomes clearer, this gives you a factor of 1 minus p squared t to the 24, which combines with this one and gives you the 25 that you want from this. Okay. So and there, there is, a, there, there, there is a, a pretty story as, as, as to how you go from here to here. To here um, that you can follow through. So in that sense, I suppose it's been, uh, at least you can make it plausible that it's the same. Okay. So um, I'd just like to use 10 minutes and come back to this business about the mirror symmetry. Okay. So what I'd like to say is that this is the form of the zeta function, this is the form of the zeta function for the mirror. Um, it looks very tempting that this factor is in some sense the large complex structure limit of this, and that this factor is in some sense the large complex structure of the numerator Above. Now, I tried, uh, we've tried fiddling with this, and we've tried setting psi equals infinity in a number of ways, and I can't make any sense of setting psi equals infinity in these equations. In other words, I think of different ways of doing it, and they different, give me different numbers of points. Now, perhaps someone can tell me how to do it so that I always get the right number of points, and I always get the result I want, but uh, that doesn't seem to work. But what does seem to work is taking this to Dick Gross, and he said, look at the Fivadic expansion of this. Okay? And that does seem to work. So if we expand Fivadically, then something which is true is the R1, which depends on psi, right, 
is 1 minus t, 1 minus pt, 1 minus p squared t, and 1 minus p cubed t, plus order 5 squared. Okay? With a, so uniformly in psi, this is, is, is the right hand, the left hand side is the right hand side plus a term divisible by 5 squared. Okay. The other part of it that you needed was the Ra to the 20 times Rb to the 30 should be 1 minus Pt to the 100, 1 minus P squared T to the 100. And that's also true, plus order 5 squared. And so it's true that zeta m is 1 over zeta w plus order 5 squared. Okay? And if you think I'm completely off my head, let me just draw a moral, okay, which is that something which is true before from the curves in mirror symmetry is if I take this quantity, the Yukawa coupling, and divide by the classical value, which is 5, this is 1 plus 1 fifth sum k is 1 to infinity k cubed nk q to the k over 1 minus q to the k. And now, although Sheldon's here is going to tell me that the nk's aren't necessarily integers, I'm going to ignore that. Um, at least the, the, all the ones I've seen are integers. Um, but Assuming they are integers, Yao, has, Yao and co-workers have, has proved that 5 cubed always divides k cubed nk. Okay. So um, this is divisible by 5 cubed. This is therefore divisible by 5 squared. And so this is 1 plus order 5 squared. So the usual way of saying things is that q is small. At least there's a, a limit where the manifold is big and then q is uh, q is then correspondingly small, and that the expansion of this in powers of q is the quantum expansion in terms of quantum corrections. And I would now say that possibly what is happening is the quantum corrections are in fact the terms of order five squared. Okay, so the the the, the, uh, the quantum corrections are the terms that are small when five is a small number. So so that's a contentious point. So I'll stop.